Starting us off at number 10, we have Giovanni Aldini. Aldini is one of the many scientists who is actually the inspiration for the infamous Mary Shelley novel, Frankenstein. Aldini was a 19th century physicist obsessed with the effects of electrocution. <laughs> who isn't? Am I right? Anyway, he was a bit of a celebrity and he was known to travel throughout Europe demonstrating the powers of electricity. What makes this guy evil though? Well, he was one of the first scientists to use electrical shocks on mental patients. He also enjoyed electrocuting corpses. One of his most famous acts involved him displaying a body of a hanged criminal and then shocking the body to then make the muscles contract and spasm as if the deceased was still alive. I get it. Electricity is cool, but how about a little respect for the dead? Hmm? Aldini was also highly respected at the time. The Emperor of Austria even made him a Knight of the Iron Crown. Ooh, sounds evil, doesn't it? At number 9 we have Wang Hu Suk. Wang is famously known for his work creating human stem cell lines using cloned embryos from patients suffering from spinal cord injury. This major accomplishment promised an endless supply of stem cells genetically matched to patients but it turned out to be all lies. Wang admitted in 2006 that he was indeed falsifying data but still claiming that he had the ability to do what he was lying about all along. The court found Huang guilty of buying human eggs in violation of the country's bioethics laws and embezzling 830 million won, which is equivalent to 700,000 US dollars of government money. He was sentenced to two years in a Korean prison. He received such a light sentence because the judge admired Huang's dedication to Korean biotechnology. Many other Korean scientists in the community are not ready to welcome him back though, after embezzling so much money on what is supposed to be a great and worthy cause. One Korean researcher states that it is truly tragic because he is clearly one talented experimentalist. Yeah, that's a lot of money. Pretty hard to just trust someone with government and public money after a stunt like that, but hey, I hope there's some scientific breakthrough soon. At number 8 we have Jose Delgado. Back in the 1960s at Yale University, Professor Jose Delgado was working on some pretty scary stuff. Delgado invented one of the first ever brain chips. He was known to use these chips in bulls, monkeys, and <gasps> humans. It is reported that he once stopped a charging bull in its tracks after pressing a button that activated the small chip inside the animal's head. With the touch of a button, these radio waves could make these animals snarl, growl, smile, invoke lust, hunger, and many more responses. Delgado recently described himself as a libertarian and pacifist whose goal as a scientist was to liberate us from our biology and especially mental illnesses and aggression. I don't know about that. It sounds a lot more to me like he was trying to take over the world with some pretty crazy mind control chips, but he was also known to test on mental patients. Whether this one is with good intentions or not, this one freaks the hell out of me. At number 7 we have Albert Bandura. Bandura is a famous psychologist who interestingly enough just passed away days ago in California. He is famous for being one of the first scientists to discover that learning occurs both through beliefs and through social modeling, which then led to the social cognitive theory. One of his most famous experiments he ever conducted was back in 1961 and was titled the Bobo Doll Experiment. In this experiment, Bandura hired researchers to physically and verbally abuse a clown faced inflatable toy in front of many preschool aged children. Which, when the adult researchers left and the children were left alone with the already beat up doll, the children took on the attitudes of the adults and began yelling and beating up the doll as well. This was later to prove the theory that children were indeed influenced by the violence in media and helped prove his later social cognitive theory. The theory that a person's environment, cognition and behavior all interact to determine how that person functions as opposed to one of those factors playing a dominant role. Teaching kids to be future bullies in the schoolyard? <laughs> pure monkey see evil, pure monkey do evil. At number 6 we have Craney Landis. Landis was a graduate student at Minnesota University back in 1924. He asked his other graduate students to assist him in conducting an experiment in understanding if we humans all react similarly in different emotions. So he painted specific lines on each individual's face and then got them to react to certain stimuli. At first, the experiment was harmless. He would record each of their faces as they listen to music, smell ammonia, read passages from the Bible, tell a lie, little things like that. But seeing no real results, he decided to up the ante. He then showed them pornographic images, then some horrendous photos of skin conditions, firing random gunshots to frighten his test subjects, getting them to stick their hand in a pail of slimy live frogs that had a live wire in the bottom so when they touched the live wire they would get an electric shock. Finally the worst one of them all, decapitating a rat. He finally put a live rat in one hand and a knife in the other hand and the test subject was then demanded to cut off the animal's head. If they refused, then he would do it in front of them. 
Sounds pretty scarring, if I do say so myself. Some started crying, others laughed in disbelief, and others got angry and swore at him. Two thirds ended up carrying out the dark death sentence, and the worst part of it all was that Landis even used a 13 year old boy, who was actually a patient at the university. His findings in the end proved nothing and were quite different patient to patient. In the end, he just seemed like an evil madman scientist. Coming in at our halfway point at number 5, we have Johann Conrad Dippel. This scientist was born in Castle Frankenstein back in 1673, so it is only fitting that he was a mad and evil scientist. Dippel was a theologian, alchemist, and scientist who developed a popular dye called Prussian Blue, and it's actually still used to this very day, which is very cool, but he is also known for the most controversial of things, such as mixing animal bones and hides together in a stew he named Dipple's Oil. Real original. He claimed that whoever drank this gross oil would then have an extended life, but he never said how long either, so I mean, whatever, dude. He loved dissecting animal bodies, and many believed he frequently dug up and stole human bodies and conducted weird experiments on them in his laboratory. Needless to say, this guy is one of the main inspirations for Mary Shelley's Frankenstein. But to the best of our knowledge, he never had the same luck as Dr. Frankenstein in the book. I'm guessing he tried to give that magical animal elixir to the corpses to see if he could bring them back to life, but sorry pal, no liquid on earth can do that. And oh, by the way, Miss Johnson would like her husband back, <laughs> and her cat. At number 4 we have Duncan McDougall. McDougall was born in 1866 in Glasgow, Scotland and later moved to Haverhill, Massachusetts. One of his most famous experiments he conducted was the 21 grams experiment where he placed a dying patient on a cot that was on a scale and weighed the patient before and after the moment of death. His findings? That immediately after death, the deceased weighed 21 grams less, meaning that the soul was indeed a physical part to a human's body and that it did indeed leave once a person passed away. The work was absolutely destroyed in the scientific community, but defended in the religious community as they deemed this was proof of a soul in a person's body. But what makes this guy evil? Well, he conducted the exact same experiment with dogs and noticed no weight change at all. He then made the statement that dogs don't have souls. Dogs don't have souls? You don't have a soul, you jerk! Ah, uh, you say one more wrong thing about me, Mutt, and I'll shove your pipes right up your kilt! Starting us off in our top three, at number three, we have Louis Julian West. For anyone out there that loves animals just as much as they love their fellow humans, this one is a scary one for you. West was quite the controversial scientist and researcher with ties to the top secret CIA project called Project MK Ultra. It was a project that used many US citizens, some of them even unwittingly, to use LSD and other drugs to see if these substances would have any mind control effects. West's studies are also believed to have major repercussions such as a murder of a young victim as well as the death of a full grown elephant. The reason he felt the need to experiment on elephants though? West knew that male elephants experienced fits, so he believed that he could induce an elephant rage with LSD. He gave the giant creature enough LSD to dose 3,000 people, and tragically, the elephant died. It was then that West concluded that elephants were sensitive to LSD. <laughs> yeah, do you think? For many reasons, this guy seems like an evil scientist. From human and animal's deaths related to the overdose of LSD, I think it's safe to say that we don't want to get anywhere near this guy. At number two, we have Sidney Gottlieb. Sidney Gottlieb was the one who headed Project MKUltra and worked closely with West in our number three spot. Gottlieb was tasked with testing LSD in interrogation settings, but he didn't just test his work in interrogation settings or even in a lab. He actually brought his studies to the bar, where he would slip LSD into unsuspecting bar patrons' drinks. I don't think we need to question how unethical or wrong this one is, as it is clearly something that is messed up and sometimes still happens today, unfortunately. But this video is titled Evil Scientists in History Who Went Mad, and I think this is a pretty good proof that this guy was off his freaking rocker. And finally, coming in at our number one spot is most definitely the most evil scientist of them all. This is Josef Mengele. Josef was one of the most famous scientists at the most horrific concentration camp of World War II. A member of the Third Reich, Josef was a camp doctor. He was known to be one of the doctors to select the poor people who were to be sent to the gas chambers and even went as far as volunteering for more and more shifts when he could. He also conducted many tortuous and inhumane experiments on prisoners of all ages. After the war, Josef escaped to Argentina and was never captured by the authorities. He did, however, drown in 1979 in Brazil. 
While many on this list were half jokingly evil and gone mad, I think anyone who takes pleasure in sending large numbers of people to their doom is most definitely evil and I think mad just goes hand in hand with this one. Starting off this countdown we have Shiro Ishii. Shiro Ishii was a microbiologist and the Lieutenant General of Unit 731. Unit 731 was a biological warfare unit during the Second Japanese War. Well, in 1936, Ishii built a huge compound where he would perform a number of disturbing experiments, including cutting pregnant women open to study them. These women were often impregnated by Ishii's doctors. Another experiment consisted of having someone's limbs amputated and then reattaching them to other parts of their body. Others had parts of their bodies frozen and then thawed so he could study what would happen if you didn't treat gangrene. Trust me though, it gets worse. Other prisoners were his test subjects for grenades and flamethrowers, or he would inject others with diseases to study their effects. Everything he did was horrific, and he was sadistic. He loved torturing people and running disturbing experiments on them. In our ninth spot today, we have Sidney Gottlieb. Sidney was an American military psychiatrist that worked with the CIA during the Cold War. This guy was the head of the MK Ultra projects. Basically, they were super unethical experiments where people were injected with high levels of LSD. Others were subjected to electrical shocks or were left in isolation or injected with other chemicals. In fact, he went around and would drop LSD into innocent people's drinks and then observe the effects. Also, this dude was obsessed with poison. He wanted to poison any and everything. For example, he tried to kill Fidel Castro with a poisoned cigar, a poisoned wetsuit, and a poisoned fountain pen. Thankfully, people were like, no, Sydney, we're not doing that. Like, this dude just wanted to watch people either die, trip out, or suffer. Coming in at number eight, we have William Buckland. This dude, uh, well, he was interesting. He was a geologist and paleontologist, but had a weird hobby he would partake in, which was eating things he shouldn't be eating. He ate things including roasted hedgehog, puppies, bat urine, ostriches, you get it, okay? That's not all. Apparently, he ate the shrunken heart of King Louis XIV. Yeah, you heard me. This dude, for some reason, ate a nasty old dead person's heart. Eating all this weird stuff was apparently part of his experiments. Which was what? Seeing what weird thing would taste the best? I don't know what was going on here. Moving on at number seven, we have Sergei Bruyak Hunko. I'm so sorry, I know I already butchered his last name. Sergei was a Soviet scientist. He started off on the right track, kinda. He created a machine used to help perform the first Soviet open heart surgery, and then he spiraled into madness. He started to use this machine to try and do some messed up procedures, like take vital organs out of dogs. He killed hundreds of dogs with these operations. Basically, he would cut open the dogs, take out the organs, and hook them up to this machine to see if he could keep them alive outside of the body. His most famous and messed up experiment was called the dog's head, where he severed a dog's head and connected it to one of his machines, which then brought the head back to life, just the head. It even responded to being given a treat. It ate it, and then it, it fell right out, because you understand. Of course, it died not too long after. Moving on at number six, we have Stubbins Firth. If you guys are eating or drinking anything right now, I suggest you stop. This one is gonna make you sick to your stomach. Basically, in the 19th century, training doctor Stubbins Firth decided to do experiments on yellow fever. This was to show that it wasn't contagious, so he would experiment on himself. He would literally smear bodily fluids from patients with yellow fever all over his body. That's not the gross part, believe me. He even took their vomit and drank it, all in the name of science. Uh, anyways, the real reason why he didn't contract it was because all the patients were in the final stage of yellow fever. By then, they weren't contagious anymore. Like, there has to be something wrong with you if you're going around drinking vomit. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with Andrew Yur. This dude conducted a number of experiments on corpses. This involved taking dead people into the public and then shocking their body so that it would move. He then would control the dead body with these electrical probes. By doing so, he could cause the deceased eyes to open, their arms to move, and even change their facial expressions. He basically was a puppeteer for real dead people. 
let that sink in. Moving on at number four, we have Johan Conrad Dippel. This guy is said to be the inspiration for the book turned movie Frankenstein. First off, he was literally born at Castle of Frankenstein, so there's that. And then he conducted a number of gruesome procedures on alive people and cadavers. In fact, legend goes that he once tried to transfer one cadaver's soul into another cadaver with the use of a funnel hose and lubricant. I'm sure you can imagine how that went. His main goal though was to achieve immortality. In fact, he got way too fixated on this and he ended up killing himself. Basically, in 1734, he was trying to find an elixir to make him live forever. And then he ended up creating a toxic substance, drinking it, and RIP. Moving on to number three, we have Sigmund Rascher. Sigmund was a scientist slash doctor. In 1939, Sigmund asked his boss to send him human subjects for his experiments. He thought he had the cure for cancer and wanted humans to operate on instead of lab rats. That's when he got carried away with his power. He went from trying to cure cancer to torturing his prisoners. In fact, he wanted to see how little oxygen was needed to survive. So he would place prisoners in chambers that suck all the air out and just watch them die. He also conducted hyperthermia research on 300 prisoners. One third of them died a gruesome death. To make matters worse, he also would collect human skin and make saddles out of them. Coming in at number two, we have Harry Harlow, AKA the monkey torturer. Harry Harlow decided to see how strong a baby's connection is with their mother. For these experiments, he used baby monkeys and their moms. Here's the thing, he had this disturbing machine that would force monkeys to mate, and then he would basically torture the baby monkeys. His most controversial experiment was a device he called the Pit of Despair. Basically, he would place the newborn monkey in a small isolated chamber for periods up to a year. They had no contact with any living creature whatsoever. The monkeys ended up having serious problems that they could never grow out of. On a number of occasions, he said, and I quote, to be honest, I don't even know why I'm doing this. Another one of his famous quotes would be, and I quote, you mean you don't like being tortured? Fascinating. This dude was sick. And in the end, he had no real findings. He said, and I quote, what is love? Well, you know that feeling you get when you've been locked in a tiny dark space alone for a year? It's the opposite of that. Like, what the actual heck? I could have even told you that. He just wanted an excuse to torture animals. And in our number one spot, we have Joseph Mengele. This guy is considered one of the most evil scientists in history. Joseph was a member of the party, and in 1943, he was sent to work at Auschwitz. That's where he took advantage of the prisoners and decided to run experiments on them. In particular, he targeted twins. He would amputate their limbs, inject typhus in one, and then give them both blood transfusions. As you can imagine, hundreds died due to his experiments, which in reality weren't experiments. In fact, he was called the angel of death by the prisoners because of the messed up ways he would kill people. To make matters worse, he even would collect the eyes of his victims. In 1945, he was arrested by the Americans for his crime, but he managed to escape until he died in Brazil. Starting off this countdown, we have VX or Venomous Agent X. With a name like that, you know this chemical compound is no good. So this is a very deadly nerve agent that was created in the 1950s by the British military. It's so deadly that a dose as low as 10 milligrams can kill people. So this chemical can enter the body through inhalation or it can be easily absorbed into your skin. If you do come in contact with it, it will disrupt the signals between your nervous system and muscular system so that your muscles in your body will become paralyzed, including your diaphragm, stopping your ability to breathe and slowly killing you through asphyxiation. Does not sound like a pleasant way to go, that's for sure. In our ninth spot today, we have botulinum toxin. And I apologize if I pronounced any of these really confusing chemical names. Okay, don't come for me, I'm trying. This is said to be one of the most dangerous chemicals in the world. In fact, it's the most lethal poison known to man. It's so toxic that one gram of this toxin can kill more than one million people. Yes, only one gram. That is insane. Basically, if you're exposed to it, then it will paralyze your muscles and can stop your heart 
and or respiratory system from working. Funnily enough, this chemical is used in Botox. Yes, they use it because of its ability to paralyze muscles. So it was first discovered back in 1895 by a Belgian professor. So he was the first to isolate the bacterium Clostridium botulinum. I mean, I am cheating here since the substance is produced naturally, but scientists did take that bacteria and then manipulate it and then had the idea to use it for Botox. In our eighth spot, we have chlorine trifluoride. This substance was created in the 1930s by scientists Otto Roth and H. Krug. And guess what? This substance can cause anything to burst into flames on contact and the fire cannot be extinguished. Or it can cause a full blown explosion. Like it has been known to catch asbestos on fire. Asbestos is one of the most fire retardant substances in existence. So that says something right there. As a result of this, the Nazi party took great interest in this. They wanted to have their soldiers use it to melt through their enemies bunkers. But after doing more tests on it, they found it to be very unstable and too much of a risk to take. They'd probably end up hurting themselves before hurting their enemies. Moving on to number 7, we have hydrofluoric acid. This next chemical was created by adding sulfuric acid to fluorite at a high temperature. It was discovered in 1771 by a Swedish pharmaceutical chemist, Carl Wilhelm Steele. He was doing tests on calcium fluoride and ended up creating this acid. This acid has been known to cause terrible burns if exposed to the skin. It literally will cause these burns in an instant. Not only that, but it's deadly if you inhale its vapors. This can irritate your respiratory system and can cause pulmonary edema. This is a condition caused by excess fluid in the lungs, which can lead to heart and breathing problems. Pulmonary edema can also be fatal. In our sixth spot, we have phosgene. This is another chemical said to be one of the most dangerous in the world. It was first created in 1811 by a German Jewish chemist named Fritz Haber. He was actually given the name the father of chemical warfare, and he's quite a controversial figure in history. That's because the creation of this led to the death of thousands during the world wars. A small concentration released into the air is enough to kill a person. So after immediate exposure, it will cause its victims to cough profusely. Profusely. It will cause irritated watery eyes, blurred vision, irritation of the respiratory tract, and a burning sensation in the throat. After that, they might feel fine, but the next day they will die of choking from buildup of fluid in the lungs. We are now at our fifth and halfway mark with dimethyl cadmium. This is another one of the world's most toxic chemicals. It was created in 1917 near the end of the first war. A German chemist named Erich Kraus was doing experiments on a number of chemicals and ended up creating dimethyl cadmium. This chemical is highly, highly toxic and reactive. It's also very deadly. Inhaling only a few micrograms can lead to cadmium metal poisoning, which will then lead to death. It also has very damaging effects on one's liver and kidneys. Moving on to number four, we have the piranha solution. With a name like that, you know it's gotta be scary. In fact, it gets its name because it can easily eat through organic matter. This solution is created by mixing hydrogen peroxide with sulfuric acid. So not only is it extremely dangerous to touch, but it can easily explode. And it has been known to irritate one's respiratory tract if inhaled. Both its liquids and vapors are extremely corrosive to one's skin and respiratory tract. It can burn the eyes and destroy one's mucous membranes. In our third spot, we have dimethyl mercury. This is a very dangerous and toxic chemical compound. It was created by George Buckton in 1857 by reacting methyl mercury iodine with potassium cyanide. And this created a very deadly substance. In fact, a small drop of this can lead to mercury poisoning. Take the case with chemist Karen Wetterhahn, for example. In the late 90s, Karen was studying the effects that dimethyl mercury had on living organisms. While running some tests, she dropped a bit of chemical onto her glove. What she didn't know is that it can easily permeate through her latex gloves within 15 seconds. And even a small drop is enough to cause mercury poisoning. Sadly, that's what happened, and she ended up slipping into a coma before passing away 10 months later. Coming in at number two, we have serine. Serine was created in 1938 in Germany by scientists who were trying to create a stronger pesticide. In the end, they created serine, 
a very toxic nerve gas that has the ability to kill people in minutes. During initial exposure, you might experience tremors or seizures. Then soon, it will paralyze your lungs and body. It kills you through suffocation as your lungs become paralyzed. Then you'll lose control of your bodily functions and you get it, it's not pretty. As a result, this is said to be a potential weapon of mass destruction. And over the years, the government has done some pretty nasty sarin gas experiments on people. Like in 2013 with the attack on Syria that took the lives of more than 1400 people. And in our number one spot today, we have fluoroantimonic acid. This is said to be the strongest acid in the world. To give you an example of how acidic it is, it is 10 quadrillion times stronger than sulfuric acid. This acid can easily burn right through plastic and glass. If you touch it, well, it will melt the skin right off your bones. How fun is that? It was created by combining hydrogen fluoride with antimony pentafluoride. And I can't imagine how that went. Like, it can react violently to water. Heating it is dangerous and it can destroy beakers. Guess they discovered that out all through trial and error. Mm -hmm. 